I mean, we have to talk about what's going on internationally. And we have someone that is a very special guest here at uh, Great Quarter Guys at Freight Waves here um, from DDC FPO. We have Chris Curtin, who is the head of customs and logistics services over at DDC FPO. Chris, thanks so much for joining us today. Good afternoon. Thanks very much for having me. So, Chris, I'm sure you may have heard on some of our talking points here around just what's going on within the peak season, what's going on in the economy. Um, this is all very U.S. centric, but we know that there is more to the world than just the U.S. There is this is a global supply chain and there are other events happening throughout the world, um, one of which, of course, Brexit. This is something that has happened uh, and brought up first to the headlines years and years ago, and it's kind of popped up here and there, but now really kind of making headlines once again. Can you talk to how has Brexit been a contributing factor to the global supply chain crunch and the problems that we're experiencing today? Um, so Brexit in and of itself has not necessarily had a material contribution to the problems that we're seeing globally with, with supply chains. Um, obviously, they're well documented, um, and I'm, I'm sure you guys have covered them a number of times, but um, I'll, I'll run over them from my perspective. Um, the main contributing factors to the problems that we see in the global supply chains are um, events that have shorter term consequences, such as the Ever Given blocking the Suez Canal, uh, to much longer term effects, such as COVID, obviously. Um, and uh, the global shortage of truck drivers, which I know is particularly chronic in the UK and the US. So in the UK, we're short of about 90 to 100,000 what we call HGV drivers. Um, and I think that number is about 80,000 for the states. And obviously, um, going back to COVID, COVID's put stress on supply chains in ways that we've just not seen on such a great scale before. And living in a world alongside COVID, the symptoms we're seeing for cargo movements between Asia and the US and Europe, to use them as an example, are high volumes of cargo waiting to be shipped out of Asia. Uh, it gets backed up in factories, container freight stations and ports. Um, we've seen clustering and subsequent delays to vessels um, at ports. Um, as they queue up outside them um, in the US and the UK and Europe in order to discharge their cargo. And then congestion subsequently on the land side operations at ports um, in the US and Europe as their stack, their container stack capacities are reached uh, due to those high cargo volumes and the lack of drivers who are actually available to come and pick up those, those containers. And then moving on to, to COVID lockdowns and outbreaks, obviously that's caused human resourcing shortages. Um, and again, those symptoms that we've observed are factory closures in China, sometimes repeated closures um, that produce goods bound for the US and European markets. Um, Far Eastern ports have been affected by closures or they've been running at significantly reduced capacity um, due, to, uh, due to people catching COVID. Um, and then that's also had a knock on further up the uh, sorry, a knock on effect further up the supply chain where there's been reduced driver and container freight station labor to uh, to, to transport and stuff containers with goods. So uh, there are a number of other contributing factors, um, such as carriers um, in, in 2020 were blanking sailings from their schedules because they predicted that COVID would cause economic slowdown and would reduce the demand of goods. Um, moving from Asia to the US and Europe. But that turned out not to be true, obviously, as uh, we may all have found ourselves stuck in her or stuck at home um, and resorting to uh, online shopping to, uh, to, to spend our, our uh, disposable income. Chris, I think you make a good point, especially there at the back end, about how we, we spent that disposable income uh, online shopping i think i know i speak personally that it, it definitely had an impact uh i felt like i was spending a whole lot more uh online than i typically do and i still feel that way so I, part of that goes into i guess consumer behavior changes but i guess one question i've got is how can uh uk and eu companies ensure that this the uk uh customs formalities coming into effect here on january 1st uh, don't compound the woes that are already being caused in the global supply chain. 
Sure, it's a, a very good question. So, um, obviously, when the UK left the EU in early 2020, it also left the EU's customs union, which meant that customs declarations are required for all goods uh, moving between the UK and EU, and subsequently payment of uh, taxes and duties where applicable has come into effect as well. In order to give UK companies extra time to prepare for the requirement to make these customs declarations, the UK implemented a scheme of easements uh, called Stage Customs Controls, or SCC, as I'll refer to it for the sake of ease. And SCCs have reduced the burden of customs formalities on companies importing goods to the UK from the EU throughout 2021. And this has enabled goods to flow th freely into the UK in a manner that reflects the, the low bureaucracy controls and conditions of the pre-Brexit freight world. Stage customs controls were only ever temporary. And as such, on the 1st of January 2022, they will end. Uh, so unless the UK government decides to implement easements to replace stage customs controls on the 1st of January, then full customs formalities will be required for all goods moving into the UK from the EU. This will mean that customs declarations um, will need to be made and more critically, customs clearance will need to be synchronised with the movement of the goods as they move through the UK border. At the moment, that does not have to happen. You can submit a customs declaration after the goods have moved through the UK border. So subsequently, as of January next year, if goods fail to be cleared in a timely manner, it's going to lead to them being delayed at the border, which will cause supply chain problems, um, particularly for industries using JIT processes. Um, it will lead to potential congestion at ports. And then, of course, inevitably additional costs in terms of money, time and resource to resolve those delays. Um, it's worthwhile keeping in mind it's not just all about the 1st of January. Um, throughout 2022, the UK is also going to be phasing in sanitary and phytosanitary controls on certain goods from the EU, uh, such as those that are products of animal origin. Um, so overall, the, uh, the burden of importing and exporting goods between the UK and EU will significantly increase as of the, the 1st of January. So, Chris, I absolutely love your background because it's really helpful to I think you've had a commercial background, you've been, you know, customer solutions, things like that. And when you look at that aspect, there are a lot of variables at play. And it, I think it transforms and translates amazingly to what you are tasked to do and really kind of oversee here at DDC. I mean, when you're looking at the global supply chain, it is definitely intricate indeed. And so taking that a level deeper, because this all has to fit together, how can global freight forwarders and international 3PLs or transportation providers with companies with operations in the UK and, and, and the, the EU ensure that full UK customs formalities coming um, into effect on the 1st of January, don't compound the woes that are already going to be, I guess, expected or caused um, by the global supply chain um, uh, problems right now? Sure. Um, so, I mean, there are a number of key steps that uh, companies can take to ensure they're as ready for these additional burdens of customs formalities when they come into effect, uh, such as more importantly, uh, most importantly, sorry, uh, know what goods you're likely to be moving between the UK and the EU. Um, ensure you know the correct commodity codes for those goods that you intend to move. Understand what additional documentation is going to be required to achieve customs clearance of those goods, both from an import and an export perspective. So that would be documentation such as health certificates, import or export licenses and declarations of origin. Uh, understand what additional physical checks may take place on your goods so that you can plan lead times accordingly. So if you're supplying goods or if you're buying goods and you need to have them by a specific time, you need to understand that there may be extra delays um, brought in due to the additional physical checks. From a cost perspective, obviously, you need to understand what taxes and duties your goods will attract. Um, because there will now be uh, duty and VAT on, on uh, um, certain goods moving between the UK and EU. Um, you need to do things like um, following understanding what taxes and duties you might have to pay. Uh, you have to uh, look at things like applying for a duty deferment account uh, with HM Revenue and Customs, if you think you'll need one. 
Um, and then there are some some fundamental questions that you need to ask yourself as well in light of the customs burdens. Um, and that's to determine if you're going to complete the customs declarations yourself or if you're going to uh, use a customs broker. Um, and, and following on from that, check that your suppliers are ready as well. It's all very well and good looking at your own preparation for full customs formalities. Um, but obviously, if the people that you're purchasing your goods from or selling your goods to or that you've contracted to carry those goods are unprepared, um, then things are still going to get a bit sticky. So ask your suppliers what pressure preparations have they done. But overall, don't underestimate the burden that the additional customs formalities will bring. Awesome, Chris. That I think it shows how many different. I think what you the background you just gave gives an idea of what uh, what these companies are facing with here in the in the next uh, a month from now, really. Uh, so I guess the important question is: the industry ready for for January first uh, and, and these custom formality the formalities uh, that are to come. Um, th that's an interesting question, and I think you would get a different answer dependent on who you spoke to. But from my experience, uh, there's a patchwork pattern of readiness in the UK for the new customs um, controls coming in on the 1st of January 2022. Uh, so some companies are as ready as they can be. And I say that because there is still a, a significant degree of uncertainty around how certain things will operate at the border. Um, there's still last minute preparations being made, not just by the industry, but by UK government um, and ports and, uh, and carriers that are, you know, such as ferry operators um, that actually will be carrying the goods across the channel. Um, and then, of course, there will be uh, uh, people who haven't engaged in Brexit preparation at all. Um, I mean, in terms of what does a, a good um, or a well-prepared company look like in terms of, of being Brexit ready, um, obviously, it's a combination of the, uh, the questions that we covered um, uh, a second ago. Um, but then also um, there's a sort of a, a, a broader reaching um, or wider ranging, sorry, um, element to, to, um, to think about. And that's, you know, you've really got to become interested in customs and logistics if you are now moving goods between the UK and EU. It all happened very smoothly before Brexit. It's not going to be as smooth now. So you'll need to do things like become literate in customs terminology. You don't have to be an expert, but at least understand what people are talking about when, when, they, uh, when they're talking to you about customs declarations. Have a plan for approaching your Brexit readiness and keep the plan updated to ensure it's still relevant by employing a proactive uh, engagement policy for your customs and regulatory activities. Uh, understand how new rules of origin um, are, are, are going to work for UK and EU movements and if your goods are eligible for duty-free movement under those new rules. Um, understand in the UK how things like simplified import VAT accounting can benefit your business and its cash flow. Um, and uh, more critically as well, um, underpinning obviously all, all movements throughout any supply chain is the data. So the data is crucial. So make sure you've ensured that you've got all of the data to hand that allows your goods to move through frontiers. Um, and then you will be able to, to approach and, and solve the problem of, for UK imports in particular, understanding what customs model your goods will be moving under, um, as that's crucial. Yes, we need to have you back. This is unfortunately the end of the Great Quarter Guys episode. We have so much to talk about. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode, and we'll be sure to have you back. Thank you all for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next episode.